When you start Eclipse the very first time, you'll be prompted to set up a workspace. And a workspace is a place where all of your projects will be stored. You should basically pick one workspace on your computer, and that is your workspace all the time. Each project within that workspace folder then gets its own folder. So it's not a bad idea to first pick a place for your workspace that's easy to find. I'm choosing my desktop, but you might prefer your documents folder or something similar. And you could check this box that says use this as a default and do not ask again. If you check this box, then you won't see this prompt again next time you start Eclipse. I will check it. Once you set up the workspace, you'll see that Eclipse creates a folder for you and that is the folder where all of your projects will then be put. So this is now my workspace folder. When you start Eclipse, the first view you will see is uh, this welcome screen and you can actually shut off this welcome screen if you want. If you shut it off, then you'll end up in the workbench every time. The workbench is where you're going to do all your work. But if you're interested in tutorials or sample files, you may want to take a look at these. They can give you a better idea of the things that Eclipse can do. This is your workbench area, and once you've got the workbench area, notice that you can specify a different workspace if you need to. So if you've been using the same workspace but for whatever reason need to use a different workspace, you can designate one here, either one that you've used recently or a brand new one. Typically you shouldn't need to do this, but if you do want to set up another workspace, you can do that. Every new project that you do requires its own project folder. If you've used Dr. Java before, you're used to simply writing a source code file, saving it, compiling it, and running it. But in Eclipse, everything is set up in project folders. So you can't just simply start writing a file. You need to create a new project folder for each assignment you're going to do, whether it's a lab or homework assignment. Think of each lab or homework assignment as being its own project, and it needs its own project folder. So we'll always begin a new lab or assignment by going to File, New, Java Project. And our default values are fine for this, so you can, for now, ignore these. There may be ch times later where, where you'll care about these options, but the default options should work fine. You might want to notice that the project layout uses a separate folder for source and class files, which I'll show you in a second. So now that the project is set up, let's take a look in our workspace folder. And we can see here is the Hello World folder. Inside the Hello World folder is a separate folder for the source code and for the class files. Since we haven't actually created any files yet for the project, we don't have anything in either of those folders, but that will change once we create our first file in the project. One of the important features of Eclipse is that it uses something called a perspective to set up the screen. Currently we're using the Java perspective, but we can change to other perspectives. For example, if we were debugging a Java project, then we could open the debug perspective. And when we open the debug perspective, it uses a different set of windows. When I'm ready to go back to the Java programming perspective, I can come over here and select Java perspective. Now as you're working in this perspective, sometimes it's useful to move these, these various tabbed windows around. And there's different ways you can do that. For example, if there's a window that you would like to be bigger, you can move it, click and drag it, so that it's outside the window, resize it the way you want it, put it somewhere where you can see the output easier. If there's a window that you don't want to have there, you can click that to delete it. You can move windows to different parts of the screen. Anything that you want, basically you can add and, and remove windows as needed. 
Now what may happen as you get going is that you've lost a window that you really wanted to have back on the screen. You can look under window and under show view you can find the various windows that you can add. Problems is the one that's already open over here. And if I would like to have a say a search window there it is I now have a search window down here but probably the easiest thing to do to get back to your starting view is to reset the Java perspective that's going to be a good friend for you anytime the environment isn't looking the way you, re you would like it to look so I come over here to the Java perspective and right click and I can reset this perspective and this will put all the tab windows back where they're supposed to be by default. So if you find yourself lost, your environment isn't looking the way you want, come to Java and then right click and reset the perspective. Every Eclipse project begins with a project folder which we've already created called Hello World. I can find that Hello World folder in my workspace. Notice there's Hello World, and Eclipse has automatically put in a source code folder, nothing in it yet, and a bin folder, nothing in it yet. The source code folder is where my .java files automatically end up, and when those are compiled to class files, .class files, they end up in here. So I have a project folder set up, but no source code written yet. I need to create my first source code file. So I'll go to File, New, Class, and decide on the name for the class, starting with an uppercase letter, of course. Let's call this Hello World. If you would like a main method automatically generated, then check this box. Often you will not want to check this box, but for this, that's what I want. It's a good idea to put some opening comments in anything, so um, this is my first Eclipse project, one that says hello. A tag for the author name is automatically generated. If you're going to maintain various versions of this, you could put an at version tag. And then notice that a, a set of comments was automatically generated for my method. Don't just leave those blank. Either delete them or put your own comments in there. I will add a comment that says the method that actually does the saying of hello. And the javadoc comment for the parameter in the method was automatically generated. Let's take advantage of that and just put a brief description. Since this is a parameter I will generally leave alone, I'm just going to put a comment in there that says don't worry about this parameter. Don't leave this comment here. Delete it. And now we're ready to say hello to the world. Notice as I type, each time I type a dot, Eclipse gives me a list of things to choose from, system dot, and there's out. I could double click on it to get it to show up. Dot and print line is somewhere in this list as well. I find it's generally easier to just type these things myself, but it's useful when this pops up to look. Sometimes you'll find a method in there that you hadn't realized was available to you. But for our purposes, we'll just say system.out.println hello world. Also notice that if, and this is not something that Dr. Java would ever do for you, but if you make a mistake that would cause a compiler error in Eclipse, Eclipse will underline it. So without even trying to compile, Eclipse is already finding compiler errors. So if something is underlined in your code, it really represents a compiler error. And I can see right here that I've got this little red squiggly, just like Word would underline spelling errors, Eclipse underlines compiler errors. 
I can also see on the left hand side this X indicating some kind of error on the line. So once I put my semicolon in, the underlining goes away, the X goes away, and I get a nice check mark here that uh, looks good. So I'm ready to actually run this. There's a run button up here, and when I click run, it will ask if I want to save my work. So I will click OK. And then the console window pops up down here. And I see Hello World showing up. This looks good. It's nice to at least verify in my workspace that things are where I think they're going to be. Here's my Hello World folder, and in my source folder, is hello world.java. That's the file that I've just been editing. And in my bin folder is the corresponding dot class file. By default, that's where Eclipse is putting things. Source code goes in the source folder, and dot class files go in the bin folder. Sometimes when we write Java programs, we have source code from somebody else that we need to incorporate into our own project. So if you have a .java file and you want to make that code part of your project, Eclipse makes it very easy. You can hunt down the file that you want to be part of your project and simply drag it into the Eclipse source code folder within the Eclipse environment. So here's an example. I have my Java folder and in it is a car.java file. So say I'm writing a program and I would like a car object to be part of my code, it would be nice to incorporate this class into my own project. So here's my source code folder in Eclipse, and here's the original file that I got from somewhere. Maybe I downloaded it, maybe somebody sent it to me. All I need to do is drag it and drop it into the source code folder. And I'm going to choose copy versus link because copy will create a separate copy of the file, leave the original one safe, and it will put that copy in the source code folder. And I can check this a couple different ways. Looking in my source code folder here, I see car.java is now there along with my own file. But I can also see this by looking in the workspace I see that in Hello World, in the source code folder are car.java and my file.